It's time to prep another The Good and the Beautiful Science Unit. How can I get it all into this one binder for my three kids? And how can I do it as quickly as possible? I mean, Mama only has so much time. I love to organize things and I love to prep for efficiency so that when it is time to teach, everything is ready to go and I don't have to think about it. And doesn't that bring us all just a little bit more peace? So today's video is very much anticipated, maybe by you, but definitely by me. I have only prepped one, the Good and the Beautiful Science Unit. I'm anxious to time myself because I have this one handy tool. Remember from my supplies video, my paper cutter, I'm telling you that paper cutter makes everything so much easier. I will definitely be showing you just how fast and efficient that little thing is. But one of the things that I haven't seen in other YouTube videos is prepping the science journals and how those are set up. And actually in the marine biology unit, I didn't pay enough attention to see that we needed a science journal. And then as we were going through it and my children were doing those worksheets and little things that they wanted to keep, I didn't have a, a common place for them to put it. So I have a couple of ideas for the science journals that I will share at the end of the video and I might need your opinion on, so stay tuned. So let's get started and we're going to go through this together and see if we can do this efficiently. Last unit of the year, arthropods. I've got my coffee in hand, my fuel, I'm ready. Let's do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean out my science binder. I'm getting rid of the marine biology that is currently in there and making room for our new unit. As you can see, I've been emptying some page protectors. I'm gonna show you how I've been using those. They are like the super tool you never realized had so many uses. In my binder, I also only keep one binder pouch in the back and I will show you how I use that also. So because I didn't have science journals for the last unit, I had to keep my children's work in this binder. How have you done the science journals for past The Good and the Beautiful units? Leave me a comment below. I'm curious what your ideas are. So now I'm ready to start setting up the arthropod unit and I'm adding my little read aloud book in the back pocket. I'm going to pull out the vocabulary words and start going through each individual unit. So there are 14 lessons in this unit and that is why I grabbed the, this pack of 15 units because then I can separate each unit, one through 15. Now I didn't do that last time, I utilized this little flag and marked my spot, but I thought maybe this time, since I had this pack, I didn't go out and buy this, I did already have it, but I thought I would try it and see if I like it this time, marking the units individually. So we're gonna try that this time, I'm gonna separate them. So as I'm going through, I am noticing like this lesson two says, for each child, print or copy the insects ba basics worksheet, which is this worksheet but I really wanna keep these worksheets with the lesson that they're in. So I'm not gonna separate this out just yet. The worksheet does not say lesson two on it. So if I pull it out and to make copies, I'm not gonna know which lesson it goes with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and three hole punch this lesson and I will deal with copies later. This is so funny. This says for lessons three and four. So what do I do? Do I do tab three? Do I put tab four in there? I don't know. I think I'm just gonna put tab three and call it a day. I guess I'm skipping tab four. <laughs> so at the top of every single page, it does say what lesson number it is. I'm just looking for that lesson, pulling it out, three hole punching it, and making sure that it's in the right divider. And then I'm going to go through all of this stuff again to look for the things that I need to copy or the things that I need to cut. So 
so this unit only had like one of these little booklets and the marine biology one had several of these so this was a little bit unusual this will be really fast though now it's time for the paper cutter so just sit back and watch the magic happen but warning it's going to make you want a paper cutter seven sheets of paper here this is how it's gonna go Boom. So I'm just going to let you watch me cut these vocab words in real time. This is actually how fast it is. And think about how fast it might be if you were using your scissors. Is it just me or does anybody else find this completely satisfying? Watching the paper being cut, listening to that sound, I might have an unusual love for this paper cutter. If you are a homeschool mom who also loves to laminate a bunch of your curriculum, another reason why this paper cutter is awesome if I were going to laminate these vocab words, I would cut them first as I'm doing now. Then I would laminate them on a sheet and cut them again. And I'm done. That literally took me a minute, maybe two. So time that against your scissors. I love my paper cutter. This paper cutter is awesome. I'm telling you, you need it. Okay, so all these vocab words, I'm probably, I'm just gonna throw them back. So I have this one pocket here. This is all I need for the little extra. So I threw the little, the one, I didn't buy all the insect books because we have a lot of insect books in our house. I just bought this one question is in the answers book. So this one is back here in this pocket and that I paper clipped the vocab words together. Those are also gonna go back here. And then the crustaceans book, I'm gonna go ahead and go through it and make sure all the little pages are in order. Okay, and then I, for the marine biology, I did not staple these together and that worked out really well. What I did was I simply just put a little paper clip on them and as I read it aloud to my kids, for every page that I was done with, we passed it around the table so that they could get a closer look at the pictures. And they loved that because then I'm not just reading and saying, here, look at the picture. They can look at it up close as I continue to read. So this will also go in this back folder. Okay, so now I'm gonna look through the information that is telling me about the unit. So this, must, this is for the optional project. So I'm gonna put the project and the supplies in its own little tab. And this unit information and extension information, I'm gonna put that in here behind my table of contents and then I'm gonna put the supplies on top, front and center. I'm not gonna mark this at all either because I intend on reusing it. And even though I'm not using this tab before, I don't wanna lose it. So I'm going to throw it back here so I don't lose it for my next science unit. See, and this folder sticks out here, so I'm sorry about this angle. <laughs> it's trying to get you so that you can see it. In fact, I'm going to use this little tab since I have it here. So I added this little, that little sticker tab here in place of where that four was, just so that I could easily get to that unit information in case I need to look at it. It's there, but Probably once I get this all set up, I won't need that and I can get rid of it, but. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this supply list and see what do I keep in my house or what do I know I already have versus what do I need to purchase. I wanna make sure that I'm prepared with everything. Got my shopping list ready. So I'm gonna circle on here 
what I might need to purchase because I may not purchase it all up front. This unit was probably gonna take us five to six weeks. So for week four or five, I don't have to buy that right now because if you go shopping for science supplies or school supplies in general, you know you can't always go to just one place. So I will, I'm just gonna start my list here with circles. So I'm circling the items that I definitely don't have and putting a star by the one that I might have when we do science and a question mark on the ones that I need to check and see if I have. And then I am making my list. So we did an ant farm when my 11 year old was in kindergarten and I might still have that. We did that with my father's world. So I'm gonna check on that. And then this, my son is gonna do biology, I think in high school next year. And he may have crayfish dissection next year. We will just wait on this because this is optional. And then of course my daughters can join in on high school biology anyway. I'm surprised that there is not a butterfly kit in here. That is something else that we did for my father's world kindergarten. And I know I still have a butterfly net and my children want to do that again. So I may order, um, let's see, it's caterpillars, right? And we may just do that like on our own as like an end of the year school thing. So here's my supply list. This is actually pretty, a pretty short list and I don't even need anything until lesson five. So I have a few weeks to get this figured out. In fact, I might even have a glow stick. I'm just not sure. For the optional projects, we'll probably do these. They look like most of this stuff was stuff that would be around the house that I already have. And this says it can do any time, but since it's spring and it's gonna start getting warm out, this could also be something you just save for the summer. I mean, if this is our final unit for the year, this could just be a summer activity. So that's kind of cool to have. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go through each lesson and see what I need copies of. And I have these little post-it notes. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. I mean, you can get these really super cheap and I'm just gonna flag the pages that I might need to copy. So right here in the first lesson, it doesn't say that I need to copy this, but right here for the science journal, it says to have them write and illustrate the definition using the following chart, have each child make a chart in their science journal showing, showing some animals that are invertebrates. So I might just go ahead and make three copies of this so that they don't have to share looking at the one chart. They can have this to write in their science journal. Okay, as I'm taking a closer look at this extension here for seventh and eighth grade for my eighth grader, it says to study the classification and in your science journal, do this activity and then create a Venn diagram, which I noticed on this page is the Venn diagram in the front where it says lesson extensions here. It says these are non-consumable. So I think I'm going to keep it in the, the uh, teacher's manual just in case I ever repeat this with my youngest one. That way I will still have it and make sure it won't get lost. And then when we get done with the lesson, I'll just open up I'll just leave my binder out for him and he can take this or take the sheet of paper and, and I'll make sure he puts it back. I think that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so I just noticed by lesson three or four, they're supposed to choose an insect to study and create an oral presentation. And so it does mention here if you need to have books available. So I'm gonna go back here to my supplies needed because before every lesson, I always check this to make sure that I'm gathering my supplies anyway. So if I, or actually I'm gonna make a note, lesson three and four need insect books. That way, if I decide to go to the library or I need to find all of my books, I've got a note here that I need to do that. So I'm gonna just circle lesson three and four here also. Okay, I'm also noticing when I'm going through here, more things to cut. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write down which lesson it's for. And I'm just gonna pull them all out so that I can do all my cutting at once. 
Okay, this makes more sense. Here's another another book. So that's cool. That means I will get a lot more mass cutting done. So I need to copy this one and then I need to cut this one, but I gotta mark that this is lesson 11. So I remember where to put it back. So since I have more than one book now, actually I will probably still cut this and I'll still put it back here because these are a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go, I'm going to cut my stuff here and then I'm going to make copies of this and I'm about done. This has been super quick. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one lesson at a time. So these are my lesson five activities that need to be cut. I'm going to put number five on this page protector. I'm going to cut these things out. I'm going to slide them into the page protector and then I'm going to insert this back into lesson five. supposed to be folded but I'm not going to fold them until I'm ready that way they'll stay flatter and they won't add extra bulk this would take if I was doing this with scissors. Okay, now this last one, I can't cut on the cutter, so I got my scissors. All that cutting that I just did for one, two, three, four, five lessons took less than five minutes for sure. Less than five minutes. All right, now I'm gonna find my lesson five and I'm gonna just put right back here my lesson five activities, done. Lesson seven. My lesson seven activities, done. Now, I, I put these back here with the vocab words. I could go through these vocab words and put those, you know, put a uh, page protector in every single lesson and put the vocab words, but I, I figure I can also just paper clip these and find what I need for the lesson. I can put these words in order in the paper clip. But this is just as easy, just come into the back. And like I said, for these large books here, all right, now we're gonna go make the copies and this binder is set up. So I still need to three hole punch this when I get back up. So I just put the flag back on it. I'm just gonna kind of set it in here so it's not gonna be super secure, but this is an extra paper that came out. On to the next. 
these are the copies that I made. So they've got the places in here where they're going. I'm just gonna three hole punch again. Put them in their place. So I have them. And that's how it's done. So that was really hard to gauge how long that actually took me because I'm filming a video. You guys aren't going to be filming a video when you're prepping your science unit, but you saw how fast that beauty there made everything. I'm telling you, my number one favorite homeschool supply. Here's the other thing to note. There's how thick my binder is. This is a, what, one and a half inch binder. These binders are also in my homeschool supplies video. These are the best binders. This one has lasted me six years, six years, and it's not going anywhere. Okay, science journals. So I was thinking for the science journals, I'm questioning myself whether or not I want to do this or not, because a lot of these copies, I've already three hole punched, so it would be really easy for me to just grab a few other binders this size for my children's science journals. And then they could also maybe use it as a binder for another subject if they need to journal or keep track of worksheets. So I'm still thinking through this, but you saw earlier on in my video that I had this stack. I talked about this in a couple of my videos. I think my planner video, I think I talked about this. I got these last summer in August, they were 90% off. I don't remember what that ended up being, but cheaper just to buy these old planners in August, I bought them just for the discs because to get the planners, it made these discs cheaper than if you would have just bought a container of the discs. So this was what I was thinking, that maybe I would utilize all of these discs because I have a couple of these things that are extra, that are the normal size. Um, planners, so the hard cover is what I'm thinking, but I also have a laminator, so I could always laminate a cover if I wanted to. And then I have this tool disc punch here. So I could utilize all these discs for my children's science journal or utilize another three ring binder. So let me know what you guys do, what do you recommend, and do you have a better idea than this? So let me know in the comments below. All right, so one more thing. I've talked about this in a couple of my videos. What is my science wall that I created here in my dining room? As you can see, I have board and batten here and some pretty thick trim. So I, I'm not hanging bulletin boards. So what I did was I utilized these command strip hooks and I just looped a string like that so that it could easily hang on my hook. Highly recommend this if you don't wanna damage your walls or if you can't put up bulletin boards, this worked out so well. I just added this extra string here to hang the vocab words. And over here, after I measured out how long I needed, this one is just separate. So paper clips, little mini, um, little mini clothes pins. I've gotten these at the Dollar Target spot before, and I have also found them at Dollar General if you have one of those, or Hobby Lobby, places like that's gonna have them. So I just need to clear all this stuff up and I'm ready to go for the next unit. If this video was helpful for you, please give me a thumbs up, and until next time, bye.